Look at this game. What do you think its name is? Crossy Road? Yup. Now look at this. What's this game's name? Fladaven Busters P Tickets? Obviously. Now tell me, what do you think this game is called? Explosive Danger? Benchmark Games? Explosive Jackpot Explosive Danger Jackpot Danger? Nope, it's called Explosive. That's it. Okay, okay, I know the benchmark games part is just the guys who made this one. They were also responsible for games such as Monster Drop, which explains the similar looking base, and even the signage at the top here. This doesn't seem to be the only balloon popping game from these guys either. These include Pop It for Gold, Pop It Extreme, Pop It and Win. You get the idea. The one we'll be focusing on today is Explosive, which now feels like a far more original name, making me feel a bit guilty for ripping on it in the intro. Visually, this game is pretty amusing with all the Acme branded gadgets at work here. This thing looks like it was made by Wiley Coyote. It sounds like it was built by him too. Damn thing's so loud it ruined one of my runs of Pump It Up when someone won this thing. The one sentence summary of playing this game is press button on specific stopping point to make balloon go boom to win jackpot. You probably want a little more information than that, so let's get into it. Some of these other versions were using a physically spinning arrow thing for your stop timing. For this explosive game, we have this circle of lights and you press the button when the position you want is currently being lit up. These positions should have two different values to consider. One is the amount of tickets that position will pay out. Additionally, it should label how many pumps of air it gives to the balloon. The arcade can choose from several different preset payout configurations for this board of lights, but we can tell which ones it's on by simply reading the decals on these lights. You essentially have two different win conditions in this game. Your first choice is to be the player who most recently added enough pumps to make the balloon pop on this buzzsaw. Your second choice, the more likely one, is to simply get the stop timing on this jackpot space. The jackpot can be set between this range, with the minimum defaulting at 320. Every play that goes into this game that doesn't win the jackpot will increment the jackpot bounty. This game does let you pick from two different sides to play on. Keep in mind that there is a setting that toggles between having either a common or separate jackpot. This would give each port their own individual jackpot bounty if toggled on. But sometimes it just does this stupid dancing light animation and it just won't show you the jackpot bounty. I don't know why it does this, it's very inconvenient. Some configurations do allow multiple plays from one buy-in, but mine seems to align with the default of one. So this shouldn't be too hard to do, just stop the light on the jackpot space. If you've seen some of my other videos, you may already know why I've held off on doing most of these dumbass stop the light timing games for this long. I've just been assuming most of you guys have seen that Mark Rober video and got the gist of what to expect. However, if doing this channel has taught me anything, it's that taking on all these requests has shown me a lot of hidden gems. Seriously, before I started making these videos, I was only hitting like maybe 5 different games for jackpots and assuming everything else was rigged. My repertoire has obviously been extended since then, so let's continue to get out of our comfort zone and give this one an honest chance. The bias I continue to hold on to with games like these is that the stop timing always feels fishy. If you record yourself playing and slow-mo it, you'll notice this quickly moving light is actually traveling with a length of two lights. This is done so that the game can cheat you around the jackpot section. If you press the stop button when this light had one of its indices on the jackpot position, it can switch the position to the second light and plead ignorance on your play. Essentially, these games gaslight you into thinking you've missed when visually it looks like you were spot on. To try and refute this, let's consult the manual. The setting in question here is called Jackpot Window. This number adjusts how generous the win window is for hitting the stop button at the jackpot space. So hitting the button when this light is on the jackpot is not good enough. You need to hit it within a specific sub-timing while the light is on the jackpot segment. 
changing this to a higher value is supposed to make your opportunity for hitting this jackpot easier. My biggest issue with this setting is that it does not express a measurement for how this value works. 1 to 20 of what? Nanoseconds? Milliseconds? Apples? Bananas? We don't know, it's just numbers. You lose marks in math class for missing crucial details like this. But anyways, this value is set to 4 by default. Most of the other settings for the copy I'm playing on align with their respective defaults, so I'm going to make an assumption that the one I'm playing on is 4. The manual makes recommendations on how to configure the game to maximize their income. They even point you to an ROI calculator on their website. It certainly doesn't exist on their current website. The Wayback Machine does show us it was once there, even if none of the snapshots contained an offering for the explosive game. That's nice and all, but I can't find anything that explicitly states it only issues jackpots for every X amount of plays that go in. If we are to believe this manual, this should be a legitimate game of skill. That said, this timing just feels weird to me. It is doable. We were able to hit the jackpot on a handful of occasions, but it just feels off. And again, I didn't see anything in the manual to insinuate that this is a rotational payout game. If any of you guys have played this game, does your copy also flash these various error codes? I find it just spits out an error after every few plays that go into it. I guess we should talk about strategy as well. As pointed out earlier, we have two options. Either you only play this game when the balloon is really close to hitting the buzzsaw, or just go for the jackpot spot. I have never seen this balloon get big enough to play for the former, so let's go with the latter. So much like Stacker, your best bet is to try to be a human metronome and try to keep a rhythm with when this light is moving. This could be to keep a beat on every half rotation, every quarter, whatever works for you. Once you have that down, just try to not be bad and hit the timing. While I do like the aesthetics of this game, unfortunately I am not a fan of this one as a consistent ticket farming option. We're throwing this one into C+. I'm not sure how controversial this is going to be, but let me make my case for this placement. It should be a legit skill-based jackpot, but I'm not buying it. It feels way too inconsistent for me. There are some games on the higher end here that on paper should be similar games. Press one button at the correct time, get a jackpot. When you play either of these games, you will set a few plays on fire to try and learn the timing on an arm. But once you have this timing locked down, you can easily and consistently replicate those jackpots. Visually speaking, these games provide much more accurate feedback on your button press timing being too early or too late. Losing on these games are much more believable to be human error. With a game like this one, when you lose by one light, you're always going to feel like you've been cheated with these gaslighting bulbs. Honestly, this game could move around on this list. It could go lower or higher depending on how they configure specific settings within the game. This one reminds me a lot of the fidget spinner game. These are games that I feel like they should be viable options, but they feel too difficult or inconsistent to replicate. The games I have in S or A are much safer options for ticket farming, and I believe your effort will be rewarded more if you choose these games. But these games could be saturated at your arcade. Being stronger options, angry arcade managers could nerf the jackpot bounties if too many people win. So being proficient in one of these skill-based meme tier games could separate you from the rest of the pack with a secret weapon. Personally, I think someone who can consistently replicate jackpots on these games are much more dangerous ticket whales than the guys who farm games like these. And when I say consistent, I don't mean some guy who rage queues this game several times and then finally hits the jackpot. No, I'm talking someone who can walk up to these games at any point and take the jackpot effortlessly. That said, viability is going to depend on several other factors, like price to play, ticket prices for prizes, how the games are configured, and so on. Be sure to play these games for yourself and form your own opinions on how strong these games are at your arcade. Maybe you'll find that your arcade's explosive cabinet is secretly a dark horse for ticket farming.